right, good morning and welcome to the worship service at Temple Heights Baptist Church. Let's open our hymnals to number 73. Number 73, Thou Art Worthy. Some of you probably don't need it, but as far as the number, Thou Art Worthy. We'll sing it through twice. We'll sing it through twice. Jacob here. Amen. What a blessing. We celebrate with you as our prayers have been constantly with you. And so we're so happy that you're here. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful, beautiful day that you've given us to worship together. We thank you for Jacob and how you're pulling him through this and that you still have great things in store for him. Amen. Father, bless him. Bless this service in its entirety. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, spring's almost here, isn't it? We're starting to get those that oak pollen and the trees are turning green. Yeah, Miss Ruth is like, yeah. <laughs> all right. Let's turn our hymnals to number 504. 504, he touched me. 504. Jesus. 430. Let's tell Jesus. 
I don't know a thing, but I know one thing, that Jesus <coughs> is who I believe in. So amen. I love that contrast in that song. All right, this time, Miss Debbie's going to come and she's going to sing for the Lord. We're just going to listen. Amen. I always love it when Miss Debbie sings. Pastor, I know you're not preaching on the blood of Christ, but I have been very, very um, convicted, and I know it's the Easter season. Yes. But the blood is for every sermon, right? Yes, it is. And so uh, you know these songs, and I don't mind if you sing along, um, but they're very convicting. Flags are still around us because we're still the thermometer is still going up, and 
there are still cards coming in. If perhaps you have not handed in your card yet, and we ask that you pray about that so that you can be a part of reaching souls for eternity around the world. Amen? So think about that and be a part of reaching souls that our church will be that lighthouse that we so want it to be to reach souls to the four corners of the globe. Amen? I've been praying much about the message I was going to bring in this, uh, this month and so forth. I have various themes, but one of the themes that we're going to cover today, and I think it needs to be met time and again, how to get victory over worry. Now, as I look across the auditorium today, I do not think I see anyone that has not worried at one time or another. We have all worried. And that's a human trait. And uh, we need to deal with that. But how can we get victory over worry? God doesn't want us to be worried. God want us, doesn't want us to wring our hands and in despair. If you would open your Bibles with me to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. The Lord Jesus Christ is speaking on the Sermon on the Mount. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 and 26, first of all. Would you all stand with me if you can? If you're unable to stand, that's understandable. But would, if, would you stand in re respect for the Bible? I think this is important. It sort of uplifts the service. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. When I looked at word thought up in the scriptures in the original, it says, do not take preoccupation or don't worry. Don't take thought. In Spanish it says, no os afanes. And afanes in Spanish means don't be anxious. So that's a pretty good thought there, right? And so it says here, therefore say unto you, take no preoccupation, worry, or anxiety for your life. What ye eat shall eat, what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body. For ye shall put on, it is the life more, is it, is not the life more than the meat or the food that you eat, and the body than raiment or the clothes that you put on? Behold the fowls of the air, or the birds of the air. For they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather barns into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are they not much better than, are we not much better than they? Look to verse 33 and 34. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take for, therefore, no thought, or the same thought that we said before, preoccupation or worry, of tomorrow. For tom the morrow shall take thought of the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the de evil thereof. Let's pray. <clears throat> Lord, we ask your blessings. We cannot attempt, I cannot attempt <clears throat> to bring forth your message without your blessings, without your strength, without your thoughts. Order my thoughts, Lord. Order my words, <clears throat> that they might come out with clarity, that hearts might be touched and move towards you. And if there's someone here that is drastically hampered by preoccupation right now. 
worry or anxiety. I pray that this message would show them that we can have victory. Father, help us. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Thank you so much. You can be seated. I, I looked up the definition of worry. The definition of worry, it says it's a troubling attitude. They are thoughts that can cause us to feel troubled, uneasy, distressed, anxious. And they make us question, listen to this, our future. They make us question our future. And when I heard that, I said, wow, that's so right. Uh, worry and anxiety and preoccupation, it's a vicious cycle. And it gets you nowhere. I was reading this and I found this example. It's like sitting on the porch on a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but it doesn't get you anywhere. Right? You're in a rocking chair. I mean, you're doing something, but where are you going? You're in the same place. Worry is actually questioning God who is in control. We're not saying it verbally, but we're saying it in our attitude. It is a form, and I got this from thought from David Jeremiah. It is a form of atheism. Worry is a form of atheism because it assures that no God is watching over us. And God is truly watching over us. <laughs> even in our time of trouble. Worry is the negative of faith. Now take that down, amen? It's the negative of faith. Note, when we worry, we're anxious. We're anxious about something. Something we cannot do anything about. Amen? In the Bible, in Matthew 6 that we just read, uh, the word, the original word, and I was really studying this, uh, the word uh, uh, take no thought or worry or, or anxiety, it's a Greek word. It comes from two small Greek words. It says meriso. Meriso, I like it with the Greek and the Latin because it's very similar to Spanish. Meriso, it means to divide. Meriso. And mouse, it means mind. And so, when you worry, you have a divided mind. Huh. Think about that. Your mind is going in different directions. Or, or in other words, your mind is being pulled apart in different directions. Worry cannot make you fruitful. It can tear our thoughts apart. And it is definitely an instrument of Satan. People that are worry warts usually don't get anything accomplished. We cannot let worry hold us down. Amen? We believe in Christ. We need to put faith into action. Amen? Faith into action. Jesus said very clearly in Matthew 6 and verse 25, I draw your attention there again. It says, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. In other words, don't worry. Don't worry about your life. What you will eat, or what you will drink, or about your body. You know, when I was uh, really young, I was really skinny. I'm still skinny now, but I'm, I'm pretty fat compared to what I used to be. If you can have that in your mind, I'm pretty fat to what I used to be. And I was very conscious of that. And I had a, 
I, 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 uh, people would call me skinny in Spanish, eh flaco, and I would smile with them, but really inside, it hurt me. And prob probably just the opposite. opposite. If you were a little chubby, on the chubby side, uh, they say, eh gordita. They didn't mean anything like it, hurt you, hurtful. And you laughed about it, but really inside, it hurt you, didn't it? It hurt you. And, uh, but Jesus says, don't worry about your life. Your life is in God's hands. Don't worry about your life, what you eat, or what you drink, or about your body. And then Jesus said in verse 26, Behold the fowls of the air. Or he said, look at the birds in the sky. You know, I can just imagine Jesus as he was preaching the Sermon on the Mount. He was on the top of the mount, looking down. It was probably a beautiful day, just like it is today. And you look out there, can you imagine a day like today and Jesus preaching on the mount? And the birds are flying and the flowers probably during the spring. He says, look at the birds in the sky. They neither sow or they neither plant and they neither reap. They don't harvest nor gather into barns. And yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not more of value than them? And so Jesus is asking us, if our father feedeth them, are ye not more better than they? Jesus is asking you and me, if God takes care of them, will he not take care of you and I? Amen? And I think he will. Amen? We really, really need to think the simplicity of Jesus is so profound. Now, God gives us life. The life that you have, God gave it to you. You didn't ask for it. You didn't ask when you were going to be born or the color of your skin or your ethnicity. I didn't ask to be born half Puerto Rican, half North American. I didn't have any notion of that. God gave us life and he provides for our needs and he cares for his creation Will he not care for you and I also? Amen. Amen? Now, how can we overcome worry? In verse 33, it gives us the first good thought of how to overcome worry, preoccupation, or anxiety, or however you want to put it, right? Verse 33, But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. In other words, Jesus first says, you must totally commit your life to him. Your life needs to be committed to him. Seek you first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things, all these other things, which we think are very important, but really aren't, shall be added on to you. Amen? You know, we give importance to things that aren't really that important. We really need to put things in God's perspective. Now, let me ask you this. Have you done that? You say, yes, I have. Really? Put Jesus first. Trust him with your life. How long are you going to live? I don't know how long I'm going to live. But as long as I live, my life is in his hands. Think about that. Think about that. Think about all of your needs. What needs do you have? You have needs and I also. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things or needs shall be added unto you. Amen? Amen? 
all of your concerns of yesterday, all of your concerns of today, all of your concerns of tomorrow will all, uh, with all your heart, live for him. I, I was reading as I studied this week on this, uh, this most important theme that was really uh, touching me because I'm living it right now. Since I took the second, I know many people know this, but maybe others don't. Since I took the second uh, vaccine, I've had reaction, adverse reaction, uh, more so than other people. My wife had it for about two days. I had it for about five days. But then I realized that Gina had given me this watch that it tells everything about my heart. And I put it on my heartbeat. And even right now, my heartbeat is not going down 110 to 120. And that's happened since the second vaccine. And I talked to someone. He says, Pastor, it's like you're on a treadmill 24-7. My heart is working like I'm on a treadmill 24-7. Now, if that doesn't give you a little concern, that got me concerned. But you know what? I had to get back to what the Bible says. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things shall be added unto you. Just this last week, I had my uh, pulmonary uh, visit with my pulmonary doctor, Dr. Kreitzer. He's a Jewish man. And um, I told him what I was going through. He says, but your lungs look great, Clark. Your lungs are seven points higher. Hmm. Hey, folks, my lungs are almost 60% open now, more than ever before. Hallelujah. But I said, well, look at this rate. He says, let me check with some other instruments. And the nurse says, you're right. Your heart rate is very erratic. Let me take an electrocardiogram. So she came in, wheeled it in. She says, um, we're gonna, this will take, it won't take long. And so she got it and she says, the doctor will come in and talk to you about it. I said, all right. Once the doctor came in, I noticed one thing. Dr. Kreitzer, he's a, he's a real short little guy, and his eyes are squinty. His eyes opened up like saucers. <laughs> he says, Clark, you've got atrial defibrillation. I said, I do? He says, we got to take care of that right now. He says, you got to go to a cardiologist today. I said, who do I go to? He gave me four names. One name was right in the same building where he was. And so he says, I'm giving you this so you can take to the doctor. So I took that to the doctor, to the nurse. I says, Dr. Kreitzer, just down the hall here, asked me to come here to Dr. Stauffer. I guess he's another Jewish fellow. Right? And um, the nurse looked at him and says, oh, we can't take you today, but I guarantee I'm going to show this to the doctor and we'll get back to you this afternoon. I said, well, I thank you very much. Well, time went by and my wife says, have they called you? And she says, no. Well, you call them. Well, it's good to have a good wife, right? <laughs> Amen. And so I call them. He says, yes. He's at, at a, with a patient right now, but he's going to look at it right now. As he looked at it, she called me back. She says, you need to be in the office here tomorrow. I said, what? Yes. He says, normally we don't have our technician for the echocardiogram come in Tuesdays. He usually comes in Mondays, but 
your case is very urgent. You need to be here. Can you be here at three o'clock? I says, I will be there at three o'clock. And so I was there. They got the results. They didn't tell me because the technicians aren't supposed to say anything. They give the results to the doctors. I see the doctor again Monday. Uh, that's tomorrow. But you know what? With all of this going on, and sometimes you get these little gizmos and they're good, but sometimes you get them and they're a hazard. <laughs> because now I'm looking at it constantly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's gone up to sometimes to 160. 160, 150, 140, 120 back down to 90, and from 90 back to 110. I think it would worry anybody, right? Mm -hmm. Plus it had me that I was a little lack of the energy that I normally have. But then I was studying this message. Now really, folks, I'm preaching this message to myself today, too. Hudson Taylor the great missionary to China of the China Inland Missions who started it said, let us give our work, thoughts, plans, ourselves, our lives, our loved ones, our influence, put it all into his hand. And then when we have given all over to him, there will be nothing left for us to be troubled about, or to make trouble about. Isn't that wonderful? And uh, so after we've committed, and we've said, Lord, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And look at yourself. Have you done it? I've done it ever since I've this been going. I've been doing it every day. I've been committing my life every day to the Lord. I think we need to do it more, folks. Amen? And then as we look at verse 34, look what it says in verse 34. Matthew 6, 34. Take therefore no thought or preoccupation or worry or anxiety for tomorrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day the evil thereof. In other words, having committed our lives to him, our thoughts, our works, our plans, our everything, we must concentrate our energies, listen folks, on living today. I got up this morning, I got up chirpy. I went to bed chirpy last night too. And I looked at my watch only three times. <laughs> Don't worry. Don't concentrate on losing those energies. We must concentrate our energies on living today, right now, for the Lord. You're here now. You don't know about tomorrow. You're here now. Live for the Lord now. Amen. And all these things shall be added on to you. Don't worry doesn't empty tomorrow of sorrow. But it does empty today of our strength. And when you worry and you're anxious, maybe some of you right now, it's depleting you of your strength. God doesn't want that. Live for today. Amen? You can be sure your Heavenly Father has made your provisions for your tomorrow. I love... Uh, could you give me the, the hymn book real fast, honey?
He's got it. I got it. Thank you. I know the hymn. It's one of my favorites. Because he lives, I'm not going to attempt to sing it all. I've used my voice a lot already. But at least the chorus. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know, I know he holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. Jacob, life is worth the living. Andrea, life is worth the living because he lives. I read this illustration studying for this message this week and it really touched my heart. The illustration is this. It's about a pastor. A person just like me. He's on a long flight with terrible turbulence. Not only did they say fasten the seat belts as the plane was going up, but before long, <coughs> the hazard lights were going on, flashing. And over the intercom, they would say, please keep your seat belts on. We're going through some tremendous turbulence. And sure enough, the plane began to tremble. The plane began to quake. Have you been on a plane like that? Sounds of thunder and lightning were outside the windows. The plane seemed to drop several hundred feet at a time and rise up again. Have you been on a plane like that before? In midair, and all the passengers on this jet airline were terrified. People were crying and screaming and weeping. Even the pastor, who knows the scriptures, just like myself, he was terrified. But he noticed, the pastor noticed, that across the ways there was a little girl, just a little girl, and she was reading a book. And she was dozing off and sleeping in the midst of all of this. The turbulence lasted for a long time, and then it ceased. And as the plane came to its destination, the pastor could not help but approach the little girl and ask her, Why were you so calm, reading and sleeping? when the whole plane was doing this, and her answer was this, folks. Listen to this. This touched my heart so much. Her answer was, my father's the pilot, mm -hmm. and he's taken me home. What a message that pastor learned. Our Heavenly Father is our pilot. Amen. Yes, we go through turbulence. Yes, we go through quakings. Yes, we're terrified. But just remember, He's the pilot, and he's taking us home, and we'll be safe, because he's at the helm. Amen? Let's pray.
Heavenly Father, I ask you so much. Thank you for the message. I thank you that Jesus said, don't worry. Don't be anxious for tomorrow. For our Father will take care of you. Maybe I'm talking to someone today right here in the audience. Maybe I'm talking to someone on the airwaves, on the internet. You're going through some terrible ordeals. You don't know what to do. You're scared. But just remember this, just like the little girl said, my father is the pilot and he's taking me home. Father, give us assurance. Give us strength. In Matthew 6, 25 and 26 and 33 and 34, and help us to digest these portions to be a part of our lives. Bless us. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. If there's anyone here watching, and you're still have never received Christ as your Savior, I would ask you to think about that. Have you ever given your life totally over to Him? I'm not saying if you go to church. Many people go to church. Did you know that many people go to church are going to end up in hell? Because they haven't put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ totally. Am I speaking about you? You're a Sunday Christian only, but you don't live your Christian life throughout the week. God help us. Maybe you need to receive Christ. Would you do that? Pray with me, please. Lord, I need you. <clears throat> More than life itself. Take my life. Take my worry. Take my sins. Take the mess that I've made of my life. I render it to you. I accept Jesus Christ as the only true, perfect, and personal Savior and Lord. Help me live for Him alone. In Jesus' name, amen. So happy you were here with us this morning. I hope uh, the messages are as a blessing to you as they are to me, myself. Sometimes I feel like I'm preaching to myself. Yeah. It's okay. But if God spoke to your heart, we'd like to know about it. We'd like to know about it, and you can let us know. You can call us at Temple Heights Baptist Church. We're here at 5020 Puritan Road, Tampa, Florida, 33617. Our telephone number is 813-985. 5292. Our office is open from 9 to uh, 2, Monday through Friday, for any questions. If you'd like to contribute to the ongoing cost of the church, and you have not been able to come by to the church because of the COVID-19 and, and, and so forth, and you're not feeling well, you can send it. Temple Heights Baptist Church, P.O. Box 290 392 Tampa, Florida 33687. We want you to remember now that we are have changed our uh, Spanish service. It will be in just a few mo moments we'll start the Spanish service and uh, we're trying this out uh, to see how it works out for it, to see if more Spanish people will be able to come and, and this will be a drawing card. 
We're trying to do everything possible in spite of the COVID-19 to get people here to worship the Lord. Amen. That's the important thing. The Bible says, do not forsake the assembling of our, your, yourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and especially as we see the day approaching. And the day approaching is Christ Jesus. He's coming real soon. Amen? We continue to follow this CDC guidelines, distancing and, and sanitizing and, and um, we're uh, at face mask and we have our Bible Institute on Tuesdays, midweek service on Wednesdays. We want you to be here if you can make it. Get into the habit of coming back to church. Too many Christians have become, pardon me, pardon me, folks, lazy. You can be here, and you're at home in your pajamas. I hope your coffee spills all over you. <laughs> That's a just a joke, okay. <laughs> But make it here. If it does, you say, my goodness, this is a sign of God. <laughs> sign of God. You need to be here. God wants you to be here. We want you to be here. We love our church. We want you to be a part of a loving church too. And we're going to go into the next uh, Sunday school hour and, and the Spanish class. And we're happy to be here. And so you stay safe. You stay healthy. And you be victorious. I'm so glad. Yeah.